Now okay. I'm putting my pet. Wait, not yet, not yet. Not yet, not yet. We should slate it, don't you think? Yeah. Rolling. Yeah. Okay, was that the light? Where are you sitting? Down there? Why? Why, are you, why is he down there? He can do what he wants. Let him do what he wants. Why are you so far from me? Come okay. All right, Get so closer. Okay. No, you come here. <laughs> That's it. That's more like it. Lovey-dovey sort of, you know. They say as you get older, your love grows stronger. So for some reason, it is getting a little stronger, you know. Right, Daddy? He's bashful. Yeah, I know. Well, I wanted to start. I wanted to, you, you were going to tell us about the sauce. You were going to show us how to do the sauce. Well, what should I say? Well, you can, you're going you're gonna to get up and show it to us. But I wanted to know who, you know, how did you learn it? Well, what do you ask me? About the sauce. Uh, how, who, who, how did you learn how to make sauce? Well, I'm supposed to be talking to you? You could talk to yes. me, you could talk to them. It doesn't matter. I'll be over here. I'll be over uh, here. Should I mention your name? No. Doesn't matter. Yeah, you mentioned my name. Yeah. You want, what should I say? You want me to know, you want me to tell you how my, the, how, how I learned how, how to make yes. sauce? How did you learn well, how to that, make sauce? Well, why don't you ask me the question? Don't you hear that then? No. <laughs> I mean, if you would ask me a question, I would answer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it now. How right? Did, I want to know how you learned how to make sauce. Who taught you, who taught it to you? How long, I mean, how many years, how many years you've been doing it? And I want to see you do it. Well, you know, when you first get married, you're really not much of a cook. I watched my mother make sauce. I watched my mother-in-law. I got a lot from my mother-in-law, a lot from the family. She got more than my mother, to, from my mother than my mother-in-law. See, there he goes, putting his mother in again. <laughs> All right, let's go inside and let's see. So now, if you want me to uh, yeah, come on. show you, I'll come and show you how I make the sauce. There were two different cooks anyway, to begin with. How am I doing so far? Terrific. All right, now, to begin with... <laughs> Well, some kids didn't like uh, certain things, and she used to yeah. satisfy them in different ways. So and she then she became a better cook because of that. No, no. Well, my, my mother-in-law was a good cook, but the thing is that she uh, she couldn't cook with the way she wanted. See, beginning with her husband, my father-in-law, he used to cook. He used to cook for himself, so he's giving a better example right there. Hey. Okay. You notice the the towel doesn't leave my hands because I keep wiping all the time. <laughs> But as far as cooking, it was a big job to cook for seven people. Eight, nine were my father. Yeah. My father used to work at, at nights a lot. And uh, she had to satisfy him in the daytime, and uh, but he used to go to sleep, and she used to cook for him and then cook for the children. That was a... I mean, separate shifts. And then I go here. This is what my mother-in-law taught me. Take a spoon, few spoonfuls of tomato and throw them in here because your meatballs remain very soft. Not like some of the meatballs you eat sometimes. You're invited somewhere. Yeah. You eat a meatball and it's as hard yeah. as can be. You yeah. throw it at the wall, and the wall will crack. <laughs> <laughs> I really shouldn't say that because I have a lot of friends and I'll be getting a lot of telephone calls. <laughs> as a kid, sure. I worked in a, after, after school. I used to deliver vests. What? Vest. I used to make vests. At the time, there was a big thing for vests. I mean, I used to deliver the vest. I used to tell my, my, my cousin, he used to be a boss, I used to work for him. I used to tell him, I time the cafe was a nickel. I used to tell him, give me 35, 40 cents. Why, where are you gonna go with 35, 40? You wanna give me 35, 40, 40, 40 cents? Go yourself. But I always kept that money in my pocket. I used to hitchhike on a horse or something, <laughs> on the back of a horse and wagon. I just go around. Well, on Saturdays, what did you do on Saturdays? On Saturdays, I used to go to uh, Delancey Street. There, there used to be a time that the Jewish people don't, uh, didn't light up uh, their own stoves, you know. And the gas, they wouldn't light no matches. On Saturday. On Saturday. On Saturday was a Sabbath day. I used to go there for a nickel, I used to light their gas. Well, my mother-in-law used to teach a lot of it. He used to teach us a lot of it, you know. Uh, my mother taught me one way, and my mother-in-law had a different slant to cooking. So she was a very up? good cook. Yeah, but why did you wind up cooking that way? Because, we said because to please him more. <laughs> 
<laughs> Naturally, that's the truth. And you know, my How did you amuse one. yourself? Mostly always eating, going to different restaurants, from one restaurant to another. Delicious. The time it was cheap. Very good. We were from uh, on Alston Street for Kanishas and a cup of coffee for a dime. A dime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my shimmel, the original. I used to go there. Well, they were the original what? The original potato knishes. Uh, uh, oh. They had the original potato knishes. Uh, they're, they're still there. There wasn't anything to do anyway. You had no, you had no radio. You had no television. And every now and then you used to get a paper. Guys to come out, extra, extra, extra. You know, buy the paper, there was nothing in the paper. <laughs> the guy used to, uh, used to go away, extra. There was nothing in the paper. Yeah, it's just the people used to come down, buy the paper, there was nothing in it. Then, 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 then we got, uh, then we got a, a little uh, at Water Kent. I never forget it. The first radio we had, the, the little at Water Kent. It was in the shape of a church. You know, it was in the shape of a church. And boy, with seven of us in the house, we used to fight what program we used to put on. I get it from my sisters. They have a garden which they grow it in. They give me enough of it so I can make myself a nice jar to last me all year. And as you see. That's about the end of it. See? Leave the cover She's off. trying to put on. I don't know why. She should talk natural, the way she did what? does now. When she puts on, uh, telling you about the, the, the sauce so and all, she's, she's trying to why? Uh, put on. So she should talk natural. She'd be better off. I don't know what you mean, Charlie. Talk the way you're talking to me now. That's what I mean. Well, she, she told me she wanted to know how I Yeah, but the, the thing sauce. is, the thing is that you talk natural. Don't try to put on. I'm but not, you, you're not an actress. I'm not putting on any airs. You wanna? You're well, looking talk, for a fight or something? Talk the way you huh? talk to me when you talk to, to your son. You're looking for a fight or something, there? Nope. See, Marty, every time I sit close to him, he moves away. I don't know. I don't know why. It's either. It's either. I don't know. Maybe he's getting a little older now. You know. Changing the subject. Right? She's changing the subject now. What did you want me to say? That your mother taught me how to cook? No, 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 no. <laughs> and every time you come in the kitchen, we fight? No, no. Because you butt in my cooking? Huh? Sometimes a man, a man it's, it's been known that a man is a better cook than a woman any time. Who said so? <laughs> I know <That's> that. <laughs> Who said so? It's been said in the well, books. Well, why aren't you doing the cooking, then? Not supposed to. Not my line. <laughs> my line. My line. I always told you, when I come home from work... That's, that's right. You it. sit on that chair. As soon as he gets through with dinner, that's he comes it. in here, sits on that chair, you're really, really running it down, wearing it that's down. That's all right. That's what I bought it for. <laughs> and there's times we sit in here, and I says, Charlie, did, are we mad at each other? Why don't we speak? He says, well, what do you want me to tell you? Gee whiz, I've been home all day. At least talk to me. What, what can you tell a person after you've them for 40 years? And after uh, 39 years of being married, we decided to take our belated honeymoon, which we never got. So we decided to take a trip to Italy. Yeah, why didn't you ever get it? Because people spoke to you, and, <laughs> and they told you about the train going fast, and you were afraid to go to, oh. to, to, to You were afraid to go to Niagara Falls, and that's it. I was ready to so go. So he never took me on my honeymoon. But well, they anyway, scared her. They well, scared anyway, her. we took a trip to Italy. We toured for two weeks. I'll show you some of the pictures okay. that we took. This was Milan. That's Milan? Yeah. First dinner we had, mm. first night we went out. This was Venice. The food was delicious. This was, um, uh, this was in Palermo. This is my aunt here. She's 80 years old. Here I am standing. We had, this is her niece, her granddaughter, right? And this, we had a few friends with us. This is also in Palermo. <laughs> what is that? This is cows. They were in the street there, right in front of the house, and we took a picture of them. We thought it was very nice. And this was in um, Palermo. They called it Piazza de Vergogna, the Piazza of Shame. The Shameful Plaza. That's right. Why was it called Piazza de Vergogna? Well, because there was all these naked statues. Naked statues, and I thought they were just great. Oh, no. <laughs> you thought they were great. And uh, the, the statues were beautiful, and really, this was at the, the leaning. Uh, Where is that? Pizza. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. I'm gonna guess. This was 
<laughs> hey, Tower of Pisa, and Pisa. What's that? What is that? This was, was a monk, naturally. It was dead a long time, so we took a picture of it. Anything that we saw, we what took a picture. Yeah, well, what, what did you think of that? I mean, you had the whole, uh, what is that? that uh, well, we, the... we, he, it was an impression, the yeah, way his, the, the way his yeah. uh, teeth were. And this was the gondolier, but not beautiful in Venice. The land is so beautiful, you could go see it, but there's no work over there. There's the people, uh, they have no work over there. There's, there are no industries. That's why they came to America. There was, they got, they had better here than there. That's why, you speak to these little children, eight, nine years old, their first words out of their mouth is, the, as soon as I become 18, I'm coming I'm to coming America. To America. That's There's right. your answer. It's because Sicily? there is, it's yeah, Sicily. in the little towns now. Little towns. In the big towns, it's like over here. One little boy, it's we like had a little here. waiter there that kept chasing me. He was 16 years old. That was in Naples. He, he, in Naples, he kept chasing me. He says, please, take me to America with you. I'll work, I'll do anything, but take me to America. He says to me, get away from him because he really means it. And I felt so sorry for him. I really would have put him on the boat, uh, on the plane with me. But uh, I felt so sorry for him because there's nothing over there. If you with you, then you were responsible for him. <laughs> I would have taken him. What's the difference? Uh, Maybe he did mean. Maybe he was sincere about the whole thing. I don't know. But the way it sounded, he would, they, would, they would have taken anybody to come here. Well, I think they would have came with anybody. Uh, That's the your, there's your answer. Uh, I lived across the street for 20, 20 years. And uh, naturally, when they fixed up these buildings, we wanted to... Uh, but I said, sure, new, new, well, new, new furniture and all. So my wife said, let's move across the street. I was against it. But then, you know how it is. <laughs> you always give in. When we first, uh, the Italian people came here, as I said before, first was uh, uh, all Irish. Then the Italian people then came the in. Then the Italian people came in. And there was a lot of Jewish business around here. There was a little five and ten cent store. There was a shoe store. All Jewish business around here. Mostly, mostly Jewish trade. Uh, you know. uh, a dry goods store, mm -hmm. uh, stands with the like Orchard Street would be today. Yeah, there that's was just there was push cards, you know. Push card. That's as crowded as Orchard Street. Oh yeah. Oh no, it wasn't crowded as Orchard it, Street, but we it had was this. Crowded. We had well, now, but naturally the neighborhood people would come down and, to shop. And I never forget. Do I never forget. Shopping, the you know. push cards in the morning were on this side because there was no sun. In the afternoon, when the sun came on this side, the push cart shifted over shift to the other over side. Shifted over the other side. There was no sun. But there was a great business over here. Oh, you couldn't get wonderful. a store over here. It was here, beautiful. Then. Stores were... Uh, there wasn't every a store Every store empty. on the block was taken. Every store, every basement was every taken. Every store. Because you had the lemon dealers. At the time, we used to get lemons from Europe. Imported lemons from Europe. You don't get them today anymore. And uh, they used to have lemon oranges, all kinds of fruit. They used to have... Uh, there was one, two, three, four different places of all, all that stuff around here. Import. <laughs> And I don't know what happened. They, they, they faded away when uh, they got sort of a depression, like, you know? And people started to move out. They started they, they... to move, you know. Business started to close. But uh, as far as the neighborhood here in Delancey Street and Orchard Street was all together. Jewish and Italians, they all worked together. And as far as actually stealing, they all, kids all used to steal. Kids, petty, you know, petty, petty stuff, you know. Just for fun sometimes. It takes something, gonna push car, make the guy chase him, and the rest of the kids just to go and pick the stuff and, <laughs> and go, go away with it. What do you mean? But, they used to, uh, while, went from while, hand while, to hand. While he, was chasing, while he was chasing one guy, the, the other one just take a few pieces <laughs> and go away. And that's it. No way. It was like cool man is chasing kid stuff, him. You know, all kid, kid stuff. stuff you know. That's all it was. But uh, kid stuff or no kid stuff, sometimes uh, it was that. Uh, you needed that stuff, you know. It was like, uh, it isn't like today. It's like uh, your mother and father couldn't afford to get you anything. You used to, mm -hmm. you know, a kid used to grab something and uh, use it, you know, uh, fruit or vegetable, whatever yeah. it was, or a piece of uh, crockery or something like that. I remember my brother Charlie getting older. He got a job. He was 14 years old. And uh, as I says, we had to go out to work. And he got a job working for. J.P. Morgan, I think it was, as a messenger boy, $14 a week, something like that. And of course, we started to, you know, little by little, one brother started to work, and the other brother started to work, and the sisters, and we started to accumulate some money. And I remember one Christmas, my brother finally told my mother that they wanted a proper tree. And we were thrilled. So they, they bought the tree, and they put the, whatever it was, candles. I think they used to use candles at the time. We didn't have no electricity. And uh, we put up a tree, but, uh, there was no such thing before that. I mean, we never had a tree. We only had uh, uh, Christmas time. Like, for instance, one day, one night, they wanted to play a joke on the kids. The kids hung up.
their stockings. They were kids. They hung up their stockings. We had a, a, a real fireplace, but it was never used. So they hung up their socks on the fireplace, you know, thinking they'd find something from Santa Claus the next day. And just to play joke on them, we were a little older. We stuffed them up with lemons and pieces of wood and, uh, and uh, lots of things we found. And I, then after, we felt bad because it was really terrible. When the kids woke up and they looked at those socks, honest, they, they cried, honest. It was really terrible. We shouldn't have done that. Now when I think of it, I say, that was terrible what we did to them. But as I said, as we went along, you know, it was different. I never remember a Christmas tree in my mother's house. I don't That's remember right, it. Right, never I did. never remember a Christmas tree in my mother's house. We had a Christmas tree. Why? Well, as I said, the, they didn't go for it, the it old wasn't... folks. They didn't go for mm. it. They, what they believed in was that at 12 o'clock at night, they went to church, they celebrated mass, and after that, they came home. We had some sausage and things like that the, at the church. And the next day, we had a big dinner with the family. Our fathers and mothers, they, they were from a different world. They were different. Uh, they brought us up. As long as we ate and we were healthy, that's all they, they counted. We'd, they couldn't afford to send us to school. They didn't have that kind of money. So they had all to do to survive. And uh, it, thank God that uh, my mother and father, we all got, uh, they, they reached to see us all get married and all settle up nice families, and that's it. My mother used to wash clothes wash. by hand with the... Uh, with the um, washboard, yeah. scrub them. And then we had no stoves, no, no gas stove. We had a cold stove, which she used to heat up, put this big pot on top of it, boil put the, the Clorox, whatever you had, and put it in there and boil your clothes and let them come white. You could just imagine nine children with all these diapers and clothes and things like that. Our poor mothers worked. We didn't have the bathroom was in the hallways, you know, in those in those tenements. That's the way it was. We were lucky to have it in the hallway. Some tenements had them in the backyards, and you had to get the key and go down to the backyard. You can imagine. What were they? Back houses. Remember you back said back houses. No, no, regular tenements in the back. Describe those tenements. No, in the no, back. no, no. They were regular back houses built up. There were bathrooms there, you know. Yeah. What was the and, Italian uh, word for it? Remember the, the Italian word that they. Back house. As far as this, uh, anybody that talks bad about this neighborhood, no, you can't. forget it. Were the Chinese here when you first came here? Uh, the China, Chinatown was confined uh, on the other side of Canal Street. That was Chinatown. In, Strictly Chinatown. In fact, Marty, Chinatown, now, excuse me, Chinatown, people were afraid to walk through it. Years ago, they said so many the stories water. about it. Tango, but it wasn't true. It wasn't no, true. No, no, that was true. I had a tongue water. Yeah, I remember as a kid. It was true. You had, you had. You had the, the detectives, uh, uh, four, uh, two on each corner. In other words, it was dangerous. Not to the, not to the, not to us, to amongst themselves. Oh, amongst themselves. Well, amongst naturally, themselves. you always get now, people that feud. Now, still amongst themselves. You got them in feet. Still amongst them. <laughs> now, now, don't think this, uh, same thing the Irish did when they right, did uh, right. as Everybody is a They resented us. You see, but what do you mean the the Irish? One? Well, well, the Irish people, an, when the Irish Italian people came here, they resented it too because. They didn't want to be thrown out of their own neighborhood. You used to have an only barge out over here when, when, when my father came here. How sure. many, how many barge out here? You had about, about six, seven bars over here. All With Irish bars. And there was only one guy, there was only one my, guy that, 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 that remained over here till they threw the building out. <laughs> no, till they, threw the, till they threw the buildings down. And uh, uh, it's not like it was uh, years ago that the people used to leave their doors open and it was like all one big house, the whole, the whole apartment, uh, you're going from, Hello, the doors were open and you would go into one house and to another. Like me, I used to, if I don't like what my mother used to cook, I used to go downstairs to, uh, and eat. I had to go upstairs and say, what are you cooking, Mom? I didn't like it. Downstairs. We used to be like all one family. It was different. It was uh, altogether different. It's really the... It's... Yeah? I want to stir the sauce. I want to stir the sauce. You want to what? Stir the sauce. What do you think he was saying about over there before, when you were talking before about the Irish? What was that? When he says there's a lot of bars. There were a lot of bars? <laughs> well, naturally, every corner had mostly bars, and you had a lot of stores and things, you know, but uh, from what I gather... But, but what, did, what did you, you were saying something, though, about him, what, what he said? He didn't I don't like want him to say that. Why not? Because. You didn't want to say what? About Irish people. I mean, after, after all, we, we really did come in here and live here, you know what I mean? <laughs> 
And then, of course, as it's just like everything else, you know, it was, they were here first, right, naturally. It's just like kids when they find something and they, uh, they, they find it and they have it and then somebody comes along and wants it and they say, no, I found it first, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I guess they resent it, you know. But then, as he says, it sort of started to get, you know, everybody got together and then they made was one happy family. <laughs> that's all. And, you know, it wasn't too bad after a while. They sort of got used to the idea. But in the beginning, it was a little tough. But it's just like everything else. Now my meatballs are in. I shall put my cover on and forget about it. That's it. Your father, what he was doing, and where he came from, what the town was, and all that. Uh, my what father came from from uh, Bolice in Sicily, and uh, through town in Sicily. And he, when he was a little a little boy, about six or seven years old, his mother had died. And his father remarried. And uh, somehow or another, I don't know what happened, but uh, he didn't want to stay there. And some men took him in. He had a farm, he had goats and things like that. Mm -hmm. And he would work for, for this man. As he grew up, he would work for this man. At 19 years old, he was coming to this country. This man didn't want him to come over here. This man wanted him to marry one of his daughters. This man had three daughters, no sons. Mm -hmm. And he says he would give him anything he wanted. But my father says, no, I'm going to America. So he came away, he was about 19 years old. And, uh, well, what year was that, right, Well, I would say 1901, something like that. He started to work as a laborer. When he was 21 years old, he decided that he wanted to get married, and he went to my mother, and he, and he, and he married her. And he got married right here in, in the old St. Patrick's uh, Church, the old uh -huh. During the World War One, he went to work on ships. Yeah. And when, when they had him down the hull there, they, they were working on the ships way down, after the times, they wouldn't even let them come up because they figured if these people come up, they would they would go away because they wouldn't want to work under those conditions. They kept them there for, for a week or so just to give them food and everything else, but mm -hmm. they, after a week or so, so just to make them come up and go out. And he finally wanted to work for the New York Steam, and as he worked for New York Steam, without an education, had 100 people working for him. What was New York Steam? New York Steam consists of Con Edison today. They took it over. I see. Con Edison. And what kind of, did he all, did go into business or anything? I'd say about eight, nine, or ten businesses, all in fruit and vegetables. And every one of them he put up, he lost money on them. He always uh, didn't make out. But he kept trying, kept trying. And they comes up, he says, I bought the grocery store downstairs. We were all furious. We don't want him to get into business. And he got into business. And the New York Steam people came over to him. They wanted him back again. He wouldn't go back. He says, I got my own business, and that's it. But my father was the type of a man. He wanted to be in business. He always told me. Anytime you're in business, you can owe all the money in the world, but you always got money in your pocket when mm -hmm. you're in business. And you can always support, you know, a family, you got money. The bills you paid them as they came along. Finally, after so many years, he lost it too. And he lost it just at the time when the world, the uh, Second World War started. As far as my mother goes, well, she was a, a strong woman. My father would never get into arguments with anybody. She would face them, and my father would always she would push my father always on the side. She was a very strong woman, even with the with, the, with us, with the, with the children. And she had to say something she told you, and that was it. And you couldn't answer her. He was tough. When did she come over? And what kind of what kind of uh, boat trip? I mean, you know. Oh, she had tell us a little about that. Bad. When she, when she came over. When she came over, she said she almost died on a trip there. That boats were were small, were very small. But they came. It took her a month and a, a month, over a month to get over here by boat. Like our mother, the same thing. They came over here, the boats were, the waves, they thought they'd never make it. And they came over here. Her mother then came over here years ago, but I don't remember her. Yeah. And she, she died, you know, you know, and all that. My, 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 but my mother was a, she was a real whip. As I remember, as a, as a little boy, we used to have, uh, in 241, we had two borders. We had, you know, two, what the room, two, two borders, borders. I mean, uh, people that lived with us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the kitchen. Well, you see the kitchen? It used to be a bedroom. Yeah, but they used to pay? Oh, yeah. My mother used to cook for them, wash their clothes, and used to pay. So how many people were in the rooms? There was two borders, me, my father, 
Uh, I was born as Rosie, Mo, me, Mikey, Mikey, and Joey and Fame. We were seven, and two was nine. How many rooms? Oh, there's uh, the kitchen, four rooms. Or, that's all, four small rooms. There was no such thing as uh, 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 elaborate rooms. You know what that was? You had no furniture then. You had the beds. Bed and chairs. In the daytime, you pick them up and you had the room. And at nighttime, you fold them fold down them and then you go to sleep. I don't know what I think it was. I think it was. That's what they had. Uh, Table and chairs. And, and, and my rooms. mother, I remember my mother scrubbing them floors, wooden floors on her no knees. No carpet. No carpets, wooden floors with the with a brush, an iron brush in a hallway and in the house. Just to make those floors sparkle. Wooden floors. Today they got so soft, they got a washing machine, they got this, they got that. So jump. <laughs> and there was uh, and they never, they never, they never cried, uh, you know, that they would say they were tired. There was no such thing as being tired. And besides that, they used to sew pants. My father was always a scaffold maker. A scaffold. scaffold. The board yeah. that's outside of the uh, the building when they that they the stand building, on. They put the scaffolds to uh, well, go well, around, as it, you know, to put well, up bricks and. Well, he was always a scaffold. Uh, scaffold. Maker. Scaffold man. So of course it was hard to get work here. So wherever they could work, get work, they would go out. Go to. out of town for months. And I remember months. him going to Springfield, New Jersey. And that Monday was like morning, for me to. <laughs> he would leave on a Monday morning. I mean, Springfield, New Jersey. He would go there to go to work. Yeah, to go to yeah. work. Go away Monday morning and come back Friday night. Yeah. For forty-five dollars a week. Now, now supporting nine money. children. That was big money. Now, so one night my father had handlebars. Mm -hmm. So one night on a Friday night, there was a knock at the door. So we were children. We opened the door, and all of a sudden we ran back and we're pulling on to my mother. What's the matter? She says. I says. There's a man at the door. <laughs> It was my father. He shaved off his handlebars. Yeah, it is. And we were, we didn't recognize him, and we were crying. My father put the same thing. And you know, it was, he used to get a big charge out of it. He loved to do that. He used to get a big charge out of things like that. Yes. The years ago, they didn't have such things as uh, sellers used to take the, buy this grape and squeeze the juice up in, our, in a room there and put the, the, the barrels in a, one of the barrels in the part of the barrel and make the wine ferment. You mean they used to make wine where? In the, in the house. In the brooms with the borders and all. We used to make the wine, put two, three barrels, make it ferment. Can just and we used to get some wine out of it. Very good. <laughs> and at, time, at times we used to, uh, the smell of that wine used to get us at night time. You know, you know what wine is when it yeah. smells, it starts to ferment. A lot of people used to do that. Because they used to make their own wine. It was cheaper to them. They couldn't go right. and buy right. wine or, at that time, they didn't have uh, gallons of wine like they got today from California or things like that. So they used to make their own wine. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was pretty good wine, too. The only thing was that uh, 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 they didn't have the facilities of cleaning it up the way they should have. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my father made it, too. But we were a little richer than you. We put out down the cellar. Yeah. <laughs> what about when my father, or your father made the wine for my father? I'm not going to say how many barrels. But when he made the wine for my father, and then <laughs> your father, uh, he got paid, dirty now. and then uh, he says to him, all right, pick one of your own barrels for yourself. The whole thing was vinegar. <laughs> Every barrel. Everything was vinegar. Are you uh, insinuating my father not no, how to make wine? No, it wasn't that your father didn't know how to make wine. It was something with the grape. It was that kind different. of wet. But don't you insinuate. What's your tooth? You broke it. What tooth? This? You're not supposed to talk. What? He's putting that in it, too. Which do your tooth. Which tooth? Yeah, it's yeah, shorter. That. It's short. How come? Oh. The other side. That's that, right there. This one? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. It's short. You better get a big <laughs> well, Isn't that something he brings in the tooth? It looks up. like hell. It even looks like hell. That's it. It's That's not it long too. enough. No, no, no. It's, it's short. not long enough. It's short of the yourself. others. Get it fixed. I think the beard did that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It brings it out. That's it. But with the vinegar in itself, he with the vinegar itself, they got money because good vinegar was uh, they sold it as much vinegar. more profitable than, than wine. Mm -hmm. Good vinegar. So you could just imagine what it looked like, you know. In the kitchen, all this box of grapes, grapes piled up. Then, of course, he used to take, he used to pick it out, you know, take it, bring it downstairs, and he used to put it in this barrel that was sawed in half, put on a pair of black boots, and start mashing it, running, you know, walking around in the grape. And then, of course, when it was mashed very, very good, he would take it out and put it in this, um, in, in Italian we say, no. to mm -hmm. strain it real mm -hmm. tight. Okay, mm -hmm. you're wrong. 
If he did it with his feet, if he did it with his feet, he didn't have to use the machine. Well, how you gotta get the, the juice out? Time, how you gotta get the juice out? The only time they used, the only time they used their feet is when they didn't have the machine. And, and that, mixed up. no, I'm telling you. Now we got mixed up. No, I'm, that's the way it is. The only time they used it with their feet when they didn't have the machine to grind it. Well, how did you? I'm not talking about the grinding machine. I'm That's talking about the machine that squeezes it. That's the grinding machine. That's your stringidura. Wow. Now they have it. Don't tell me, because I made wine, too. Oh. And well, in Europe... Well, anyway, my father had good uh, wine. Yeah. Well, my father was in Italy. He was in the... In, in, uh, no, no, my father was in the... Uh, start, start from uh, his mother and the whole thing, start all that. Well, I can't say all that. Well, no, you say it was... Uh, well, he was from... Uh, his mother, he, did, he, he, didn't, he didn't know who his mother was. He had, been a, but he had been on his own. So he went in with, to live with some family. Yeah. And this, this, these people took him in. Of course, then he went away to be a... When he became of age, he went away to be a uh, soldier in the cavalry. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, he stayed there. And of where? course, I, in where, the, what what town was this and where? Um, Bojina. In Sicily. In Sicily, Bojina. In Sicily too. See, it was different nationality from us. Well, the towns were one, one after the town was one towns, after the other. Uh, one after yeah. another. Tell me not. This day, they were coming through the town, through yeah. my mother's town. Of course, everybody comes out on the balconies to look at uh -huh. the soldiers going by. They're in uniform. They're beautiful. Mm -hmm. He wore a uh, blue uniform with a hat with a big white plume on it, and he was on horseback. And of course, my mother was on the balcony. And uh, when he passed through, he looked at her and she looked at him. And it was sort of love at first sight. So he brought out an instance that he said that the balcony was so low that if she just put her hand down, she could, That's the truth. She we could saw touch it. him. We saw it. We now, when we I went to it. Italy, I uh, asked my aunt to take me over to my mother's house where she lived. They brought me over to the house. And that was true. Mm -hmm. I took a picture of it, and the balcony was really that low that you could so have we touched him. Picture, See? We lost all the films. <laughs> well, anyway. You lost all the films? Sure. Sure. And I kind of somebody touched the camera. Well, that was it. That was it. <laughs> Big hearted herd. He's got to make everybody fiddle around with the camera. You know. I lost a Touch this and touch that. And I, I lost, lost my mother's picture. I lost a But I'm going to take another one of it. Well, yeah, anyway, then, fine. of course, they fell in love. So they caught it for about 22 days, and then they got married. So my sister was about six months old, and he kept calling her to come to America. But my mother didn't want to come. She was afraid of the boat. And every time he would call, if, come to America, there's, uh, it's nice over here. It'll be different living. Well, anyway, to make a long story short, he got so mad, he says to her in the next letter, if you don't come to America, I'm going to leave you. So she got on the next boat and came over. Yeah, but you said that... Uh... She didn't want to get on the boat. She didn't want to. Every time she got on the boat, her. she turned back. Our they brother, tricked her. They tricked her into getting on the boat. He was going to America with her. He says to her, I'm going to America too with you. So he mm -hmm. put her on the boat, and as she turned around for a second, he just faded right out of sight. Boat, that's it. Well, she that? remained my, uh, yeah, my uncle. Died. She became frantic. Naturally, it was too late. The boat had started out. But it took her about 30 days to come to Very America. Very bad trip. Very, Very bad, bad trip. And of course, they were they looked like peasants, you know. My little sister with the little kerchief on and her. They really looked. Well, anyway, he came to they came to America and they went and lived, I think, on Third Street. Then they lived across the street. Mm -hmm. Then eventually, my aunt came. So naturally there's no place to live. So you come and board with us. Mm -hmm. So they took my aunt in, my uncle, and her son. That's three plus So that's nine three kids. plus nine children. You figure it. Three plus nine children? Plus right. The, uh, plus plus my mother and father. Eleven. And three is fourteen. Well, that's so my you. mother, so my aunt occupied the bedroom. The kitchen was in the middle. And the, my mother, father, and the children were in the living three room. Three rooms. Worse than us. Three rooms. And don't forget, uh, they used to have their babies at home, too. No, don't you think there was there hospitals? No such thing as they used to call the midwife, and the midwife, midwife would come in. That's so right. you were born here? The twins were born at home. Yeah. The twins are who? Me and my brother Charles. And of yeah. course, there was such a big row that time over the twins. Somebody <laughs> wanted the girl, the other one wanted the boy. What do you mean, somebody wanted the boy? They wanted to take them. Because they, were get, they got excited. Two kids, how are you going <laughs> to feed all these kids? Well, so one woman said, don't get excited, I'll take the girl. What do you think this is? <laughs> 
What do you think this is? A bargain basement? I'll take the boy. What is this? Oh, you had it wrong. Charlie, I was right. What were you right about? My father just smashed the grape yeah, with his feet. But now what the... And then put in the thing. But no, they can't. You mash it once. Oh, my God. Your father didn't have the machine my father had. Yeah, well, we had machines, all right. Continuing joke. You don't know him, Bartik. Well, what kind of work did it exactly do besides scaffolding? I mean, where did he work? What kind of things happened to him? I mean, was it dangerous? My father? Was it like, yeah. There was a lot of things. You know, another time he came home, he hurt his arm, and he was out of work so long. And, you know, when the master of the house was in market, it was hard on us. My mother used to sew pants to keep the family going. My mother was a, a very fine hand sewer. Uh, you can't remember, but the older people will remember when I mentioned his name. My mother made pants for Daddy Browning, a millionaire. He married... Uh, he married Peaches. a young girl. Her name was Peaches. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is... I'm serious. And my mother was such a fine sewer that every... And he used to go here on Arnheim, on Arnheim, on 9th Street, to have his clothes made. And they used to give the pants to my mother because her sewing was beautiful. With so nine fine. Yeah, and my mother used to take the clothes, listen to me, take the, the pants, sew them, and she used to teach us how to sew. We had to sit by her and do the seams up to, and the children, uh, who was running around, who was wet, who was hungry, who we had to give a bottle to. That's how we were raised. My mother used to finish the pants, fold them all up nicely, make a bundle, and carry them back to 9th Street. They would give her another batch, and she'd come back. You had to bring them and deliver them. Homework. It was homework. homework. Nobody would come my to the house the and pick them up. Thing. My mother did the same thing. And actually, we had a... She taught us. She taught us how to sew. She taught us how to knit how to crochet, how to embroider, everything. We did everything. We watched her and we learned. Mm -hmm. But it was tough. And she had to help out, too. So uh, my mother, my sister lived with... My mother, rather, lived with her mother. Mm -hmm. in, wait a minute. In the hallway. Be careful. What's Who's in the hallway? What's happening? Coming up and down. I forget. Somebody's going up and down. Just be yeah. careful. <laughs> no, you never know. So yeah. my mother used to... My mother used to live with her mother, you know, after, or wherever it was. She lived in somebody's house anyway. So she says that this, talking about things that used to happen in Italy, there were strange things. They, you know, they used to tell us these stories. You know, if you want to believe it, you believe it. But, you know, the way it was, I'm sure my mother wouldn't lie to us. She says that uh, this night she was sleeping and the baby woke up. And, of course, the woman used to nurse the children. There was no such thing with a bottle. So she got up and started to nurse this child. As she nursed this child, she's sitting up in the bed. Now, at the foot of the bed, she saw this armor, this man appear to her. He was all in silver. And he says to her in Italian, I'll say it in English, if you hit me with something, I'll make you rich. So she got scared. So she took the little baby and pressed it closer to her chest. So the man repeated it. If you hit me, if you hit me with something, I will make you rich. So with that, she got scared and he disappeared. Now, they claim that after they sold the house, these people started to dig. They were fixing the house. And they dug and dug and dug. And you'd be surprised. They found all these silver coins under the ground. Now, I'm sure my mother wasn't lying. These were stories that she said. And this happened when, when uh, she was alone then? She was alone then. And where was, where was her father? My father was in America at the time. Mm -hmm. So then I guess... Well, you see, let me put it this way. Years ago, they all were great storytellers because, you, as I said before, you had no television already or nothing. nothing. You used to get, actually, people, they used to come to the house and tell stories to kids and everybody and say stories for, for hours and hours, real stories that you don't know whether to, you had to believe them or not. But they say stories that, uh, and they were very interesting. They used to keep you on your toe, either to keep us quiet or what it was. But no, you'd be surprised. Some fantastic really, really stories. stories. Fantastic yeah. stories. Some fantastic stories. Well, did she stories. tell her husband that story? And what did she do? He wanted to Oh, no, then she told, <laughs> no, wait a minute, that's right. Then she told, when she, uh, in the morning, she told the people she was living with, whether, I don't know if it was her mother, so the man says to her, you stupid thing, you, he says, you could hit him with a baby's diaper, anything you had in your hand. He says, you would have became rich. Then who knows? <laughs> who knows? You know. You know. Who knows? 
So one time we had, you know, as we got older, we got bored. Not civilized, you know. The children got older, you got boyfriends, you brought them up the house. You wanted the apartment to look nice. So we painted the apartment, and he had this great big picture of him hanging on the wall in uniform, which was beautiful. And it was about, oh, this big, real, a big picture. Mm -hmm. So when we painted, we figured, you know, the boyfriends come up. You don't want those things hanging around up there anymore. You know, you want to better yourself. So we didn't put the picture up. Well, anyway, he didn't notice it. I guess for some reason, I imagine he figured the house was just painted. They didn't get a chance to put it up yet. Well, one day, a neighbor of ours came up. And she says, well, my father's name was Martin. But a lot of people called him Philip. I don't know why. Don't ask me why. But uh, they called him Filippo. Mr. Filippo. I don't understand. No, I don't know why either. Point. Don't yeah. ask me why. I have a brother. His name is Salvatore. They call him Charlie. That's, 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 my, that's name, my twin. My name. His Luciano. name is Luciano. They call him Charlie. Why? Anyway. My name was Catherine. They called me Kelly. I don't know why. Anyway, what what happened? Well, so anyway, this woman came in. so this woman came in and she started to, she started to tease him, and she says, Mr. Filippo, I don't see your picture hanging up anymore. Well. That's all he had to hear. He figured now for sure, I don't see my picture up anymore. Well, he turned to my mother. There was an awful row in the house that night. That woman was very embarrassed. She says, if I knew you were going to take it up like that, I would have never mentioned it. He says to my mother, I want that picture tonight because I'm going to break it. So she says, uh, eh, well, you know, they, kind of, they started to make excuses. But he was fit to be tied. He was furious. And that woman felt very, very bad. Till this day. May he rest in peace. We never gave him that picture. And my uh, brother has it. Another thing. That's a beautiful picture. I mean, you didn't give it to him? No. How do you think we made the other picture? Uh, well, because he would have broken it. And then, and this he is funny. He would have broken it to bits. And this is funny. After the man dies, they had the picture made, and everybody got one a piece. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't, no, don't say that. Come on, that's the truth. No, Charlie, don't say that. The picture, the big picture, remained the way it was. My brother has it. But the small pictures, we all bought one each because it is a, you had one. It is a beautiful right. well, picture yeah. of him. Yeah, I got it. It really is beautiful. How long was it before he became a citizen, though? I mean, this one, want to get some well, idea of what these people well, were doing. Well, I don't doing. know. My sister Mary knows that, see? Well, anyway, you, you tell her what happened with the immigration thing. Well, when he went to, you know, they, he wanted to be a citizen, he had to take my sister along with her because she had to be the interpreter. Right. So, he so she, no, he couldn't speak English. He says a few words, but not in sentences, yeah. you know. So, of course, she went up to the girl there, and she says to him, you want to become a citizen? So, of course, he didn't understand her. So she says, you got an interpreter. So he called my sister. Come in. So she says to my sister Mary, she says, um, your father doesn't understand or speak English. She says, no. She says, how long is he in, this, in America? She says, uh, oh, 30 years. She says, why, that's terrible. She says, and he can't speak a word of English? She says, I think that's terrible. So he says to her. No, he said to Mary. He said to Mary. What so Mary, say? so he says to Mary, what did she say? So my sister Mary says, you know, she says that it's vergogna that Dandane uh, America, Mango Sabalare Americana. He says, oh, yeah? He says, go. He told her something in English? So he told her something in English, a dirty word. <laughs> go in yourself. So she says, oh, that's terrible. She says, get him out of here. <laughs> so he never became a citizen? Oh, he was a citizen. Yeah, he became a citizen. Well, how many times do you have to go through it? Well, I don't know if they have to renew it then, you know? Oh, God. But that was funny. He says, I'll show you if I know how to talk English, he told her. <laughs> he knew the right words. <laughs> that word they always learned. When did you move to, when did he move to Staten Island? My oh, father I moved to, to Staten Island. Children. We were kids. Wait a minute. They bought the last. My they brother, I think Andrew was about two years old. They bought lots. Well, they, we bought they the buy? lots. They, well, we, no, we didn't have anything. So this man came, and he was a friend of my father's. He says, you know, he says, I have a lot of lots out in Staten Island. I'll give them to you real cheap. You don't have to pay me all at once. Whenever you have the money, you pay me. So he gave, he gave him one lot for $200. That was something. So of course, there was a little bungalow on it. But really, we couldn't afford it. But just for the, for the like cooking even... his own meal, yeah. oh, he loved that. He had to have certain gravy, yeah. certain tomato paste. My mother had to make it in the summer, mm -hmm. preserve it, mm -hmm. because he wouldn't want to eat this. He wanted his own. And he would make it, and it would come out so dark because it was really dry, you know? Mm -hmm. And he loved it. And then what would happen? He would 
make the macaroni, and he'd call everybody in to eat. Come and taste it. Come and taste it. How, how are we going to eat if we taste yours, Pop? You had to taste it. You had to taste them. He used to <laughs> save them for us. Save them. That was a true boy. That was an amazing. Now, now, now that he's gone, they, they destroyed the everything. They just made a plain grass and trees, that's all. Where? In Staten Island. Well, there's nobody to take nobody care of it. Nobody to take care of it. There's only my... Nobody to garden. There's only his, uh, my sister already and his uh, sister. Yeah. And she, nobody could take care of it. So they, she had it all cleaned up and it cost her money to clean it up too. Mm. That's some beautiful stuff there. It's all gone. I was to show you, when they build it up, when they, the father or mother builds it up, and then nobody else wants to take care of it. Uh, okay, that's good. that's good. I remember one time we had a fig tree. He used to love fig trees, and my mother couldn't stand them. Yeah. In the wintertime, you had to cover them very, very well, otherwise they froze. One winter, when he did climb up, he was getting old, he fell oh. off the ladder, yeah. and he got hurt. And my mother was so angry, she says to him, I hope those fig trees die. I hope they never bloom again, she says. And then, of course, uh, my mother became ill. And uh, the next winter, she passed away. And the trees never bloomed anymore. It was just like she took, she took them with her. And that was that. Now, that's enough for today, Marty. Okay, that's it. Uh, that's good. That's right. good. I, hope my sisters don't get, I hope my sisters don't get after me because I have five sisters, and they're going to kill me. Katie, they're going to say? Oh. Well? Is that all for today? Now, listen, could I put my furniture back? What furniture? You know, things in here. Could I set up? These things are going to be upset tomorrow again? No, I mean, I can't stay this way. I have to vacuum the rug, wash my dishes. Right? Huh? When you leave, not now. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You're thinking of Papa, Grandpa? Yeah. Oh, but the way he told. And he says, you know, he stands there with his hands behind his back, and he says, go, and he goes, but, you know, he, he emphasized it. <gasps> my sister Mary says, I will never take him out with me anymore. He embarrassed me. Didn't that was... at the, uh, at the, uh... In the office. He says it's the unemployment, but I don't remember. Well, of course, you always had to be had taken interpreter because he didn't speak English. Mary says, as far as me, I'm not taking him any place anymore. <laughs> and that's a shame, make me say things like that. Is he still taking this? No. <laughs> I'm ready. You won't get out of this house alive. <laughs>